ready to go with our good buddy Bruce Pearl, the Auburn head coach. Coach, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Who are you rooting for to win the NCAA tournament? Well, that's a great question, Dan. Good morning. It's great to be with you. Um, you know, I was rooting for some guys that hadn't gotten there to get there. Um, first off, I was rooting for Purdue to get there. I, I was rooting for NC State to get there in the in the 11 seed. I, I was rooting for Tennessee to get there because the farthest they had gotten was the Elite Eight. Uh, this has now been the second time. First time was when I believe we got there in 10. Um, because I know the mountain that you've climbed when you've gotten to the Final Four. I, I know what it means to a, a coach. I know what it means to a program. I know, know what it means to the players. Now, once there, to your question, um, I don't know that I've got a. Fa- I don't know that I've got a favorite um, at this point. Um, I think Purdue and UConn are two, the two best teams that are left, obviously. And uh, um, but I don't. I don't know at this point. I've got anybody to root for. Okay, would you root for or against Alabama because? They're in your conference. Do you want your conference to win a national championship? Man, that's barely even a fair question, Dan. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if I said, hey, I'm rooting for Alabama. I mean, I'm rooting for the <laughs> SEC. I'd be completely lying and just disingenuous. Okay. That's my arch that, rival. That's fine. Uh, you know, the last time the SEC got to the Final Four was 2019 when Auburn got there. Auburn was the first program from the state of Alabama to ever get there. Now Alabama can join us. Um, you know, so I mean, come on, man. There's just, there's no way, you know, and even within the framework of your own human nature. Now I have said this many, many times and I'm going to say it again. Nate Oates is one of the best coaches in the country. They have got a great program. They play fast and they play fun. Uh, there are other reasons why prospects should come to Auburn, not Alabama. Okay. (laughs) So I'm not giving them a recruiting infomercial here. Okay. But, but you know, you know, no, I will not be rooting for Alabama. Does UConn have a weakness? I don't think so. And I've not studied them as much as some of the other teams, but I don't think so. Um the weakness could be that the weakness could be that it's uh that it's only a 40 minute game. If it was an 80 minute game, they they beat everybody by 60. <laughs> um, you know, the the only thing I think that could get UConn would either be Zach Eady or because I think he could still be pretty effective, or um, it's just 40 minutes, and it's and it's one game. And it's March Madness. UConn's the best team in the field. What's it like to be in the huddle? You know, UConn goes on that 30 to nothing run against Illinois. Have you ever had that moment in the huddle with any of your teams where you go, you got yourself in this. You get, get yourself out of this. I got no words to say. I mean, uh, when you're the opposing coach? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. How about get a stop? <laughs> like, well, you know, how about how about get a rebound? How about let let's get a stop? Oh, let's, that let's that's stop. your that's your uh, Newt Rockney speech. How about you get a stop here or rebound? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, let's keep it. Let's bring it down in in its simplest terms. You know, I mean, how about defending without fouling? I mean, how about you know, I mean, anything uh, to get a stop other than just me having to call a timeout to stop the bleeding. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, we have big men back in basketball. I don't know if this is an aberration here, but you got some big men who are uh, certainly making an impact. Uh, Edie, who came back, uh, improved his draft stock, I'm guessing. Um, NC State, uh, Connecticut. I mean, these are guys, I don't know, you know, who's going where in the draft. That's usually how we, we tend to uh, decide if yeah. somebody's a good big man. But these are all impactful big men. Is this, is, is there a trend here? Yeah. You know, Dan, that's a great, great discussion and and, 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 a, and a great question. You know, guess what, though? There's been big men in college basketball, and there always will be. There always will be. The separator is there aren't there aren't the same caliber, the same kind of big men in the NBA because of its being positionless basketball, Yeah. right? We don't have a post player anymore. Um, but in college, you do. In high school, you do. And we always will. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, even a year ago, Sonogo was a pretty good big man in the college basketball game. Uh, Sheway was a pretty good big man at Kentucky in the college basketball game. Uh, the big kid at Gonzaga. I mean, I, you know, so this is a great difference between college and the pros as you can legitimately have a dominating back to the basket post offense, post defense, big 
because in the NBA, everything is five out and, and, and excuse me, uh, you five out in the college game. It's four and five out, but you have a post presence. And it's one of the things I like about, I like about our game. But also you get these players we're talking about, you know, DJ Burns and you're talking about Klingon and you're talking about Edie, you know, they're not one and done guys. Uh, so they, they have a little bit more of a storyline that it's not coming in and, you know, wanting to shoot threes. You know, this is who they are. And it seems like their coaches have built around them and allowed them, you know, to be able to play the basketball that they're comfortable with. You know, abs ab absolutely. Um, and uh, they're, they're, they're all great stories. And like you said, um, sometimes we judge the quality of the big men about their draft stock. And that should not be the case. We should judge the quality of the big men based on the impact that they have on their teams. And, you know, Clingham's gotten so much better. DJ Burns has gotten better and being utilized properly. Edie, obviously, would be the one big whose game does could potentially translate because he is so dominant. And he is such a a a, a factor. Uh, and he's gotten, look, the, the last play of the game against Connect when he takes him to the basket and is able to block that shot that he can't make that play a year ago. So he has uh, become mobile, more mobile. I, I, I think the issue with the difference in the game is the NBA, the men are so big and they are so athletic and, and the rim being at 10 feet and the lane being oh so wide. There's just not enough room anymore for guys like Shaq or, 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 or guys like Al Sindor or guys, guys like pros coming out right now. I would be very interested to see where a Bill Winnington would play or, or, or uh, you know, uh, the great inside play for the Celtics, you know, Parrish or uh, uh, the Bad Boys and Detroit Pistons. Is there, is there room for any center in, in college basketball and pro basketball now? I don't know. Talking to Bruce Pearl, the Auburn head coach. Uh, the Tigers were number four seed, lost to Yale. In the first round, what the hell happened there? Well, anything to say anything that would be any way uh, critical of any other circumstance other than Yale playing great takes away from a little bit of takes away, you know, from Yale's victory. It is March Madness. Last year, Princeton in the 215 game did beat Arizona. There is something about matchups. Um, those Ivy League teams play harder uh, and they're more physical. Um, they're not as athletic, they're not as big, but they don't do things to beat themselves. They won't turn it over as much. They'll make their free throws. They'll, they'll value possessions. They're playing for one shining moment because all year long, they've been battling it out in the Ivy League where the quality of basketball is good, but it's just not incredibly above the rim. And they're dying to get into that game. Um, now in our game, you know, we had a couple of things that happened. Number one, 25 fouls were called in our game. You could add the fouls in the Houston uh, 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 Duke game, and they don't get to 25. And they fouled each other every single time down. You know, so they let you play in the NCAA tournament, but they didn't. That was not the case. The game was not called that Wait way. Wait a minute. You're not going to get fined retroactively by criticizing the officials are you have you checked my contract i can afford a fine i'm not getting, i'm not I'm, I'm not criticizing the officials i'm giving you facts our facts are okay right, right? Big, i'm not, big, I'm not big i haven't yet said one word bigger i'm just saying that <laughs> if you add and so you know sometimes in the first round they for whatever reason the game get called closer than you do in the in the later round because it's and so i'm should i train my team to play for the first round or should I train my team to play in the NCAA tournament? Are you asking me? Yeah, because you can't get fined. Um, you got to train your team to be ready to go. First round. That's it. We were, we were ready to go. Listen, we shot 50% in the game. We out-rebounded them. We, we, we were ready to go. Yale made shots. Yale made plays. It can happen. Uh, and uh, we started the game 12-5. Uh, now, I, I got one of my players, my, my second best player. No, we don't need to rehash. All right, I'm just saying. You lost. Yeah, you, you ruined some brackets there, including Adam Sandler, who had you going to, uh, I think, the Final Four. So I hope you're happy. I'm not happy because Adam Sandler is like my favorite Jew. You know, and, <laughs> and he, you know, he, created, he created a song you know, that I could sing in Hanukkah. 
you know, and, and I let him down. I, and I, 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 I busted a lot of brackets <laughs> of some friends. So I'm, I, I gotta, I've got to own that. You know what? I'm going to talk to him maybe uh, this Wednesday. Because I think we're doing Happy Gilmore too. Maybe I put in a word for you, okay? Oh my God, I'd love to. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you, Dan. Uh, can you use any part of your salary to pay for NIL? If you no. wanted to sprinkle no. in a little bit. No, I'd love to. I'd love to be able to contribute to that, um, but I can't. And uh, listen, the game is mm-hmm. great off the court, and what coaches and players have done to to put the game in the position that it's in right now is really, really good. And everybody should enjoy it. Um, you know, right now at the court, I'm glad the kids are able to get the NIL. I don't want them to work at Subway. I want them to own five of them. And uh, if the market is, uh, is, is in a situation where the kids are, are worth what they're worth, how much are these kids at NC state worth to NC state right now? How much? Are, yeah. you know, yeah. And the answer is a lot. Um, now there are some things that I would do. I would, I would not have the unlimited transfer whenever you want to transfer portal uh and the nil working at the same time because together they're they're not working there's more structure in professional sports regarding how we compensate our athletes than there is right now we just got to find a way to provide a little order and a little structure so that every year um i'm not having to ask my wife at the end of the year honey would you like to stay married to me uh we just celebrating our our you know our 15th anniversary or you know our for a player, we've, we're celebrating our second anniversary. Would you, would you like to stay married for another year? Because somebody across the street, you know, has, has, has got a better deal. Your wife officially hasn't entered the transfer portal. No, she has not. Okay. Just want to make sure. I'm really, really grateful for. Okay. All right. But there could be somebody who entices her with, uh, you know, the bag. Absolutely. The bag, as they like to say. Absolutely, and somebody's always got a better. Somebody's always got a bigger bag than me. <laughs> How about we end it right there? <laughs> uh, always, Dan. Always, always a pleasure. Hey, listen. Next time, let's solve the world's problems. Okay. Okay. All right. And I would leave you with this: much nachas, my friend. Thank you. You're welcome. You and needed. You, you needed it after you know losing to Yale. Yeah. But we we moved on. Much, hey, much enough. SEC champions in 2024, SEC tournament champions in 2024. I'm very proud of our kids. It didn't end the way we want it to. Y'all be good. Thank you, or, Bruce. Thank that, you, Dan. That's Bruce Pearl. Well, let me see. Maybe I could, you know, name drop, talk to Sandler. Sandler picked Auburn to win it all, I think. So I don't know. He might be at Danny, I don't want to see that guy ruin my bracket. <laughs> 